Let's have a play black in this game. Again, looking at trying to keep simple manoeuvres even more simple to avoid the complications. So simply capturing the pawn here in the centre, as we do, smaller piece attacking the higher piece, which is the knight attacking the queen. And pushing the pawn up, just basically blocking the knight, uh, the pawn, sorry, from attacking our knight if we're coming out to get castles on the king side. So they bring the knight out, so we can safely bring our knight out. And then we can grab the knight here. So sometimes this is a very innocuous type of opening that white can bring into play. Sometimes it does work because they try and basically open up this file and then start attacking on the king side. So very mindful of that. So we captured it, the knight anyway. And we're still going to go on king side castle. So at this moment in time, I've got my knight defending this particular area here from the, any potential queen manoeuvres. So I'm feeling fairly okay with the position. This is where we went and castled on the king side. So then they come with a single attack with the knight. I um, didn't really know what that was planning to do. I think the idea probably is to come back here and attack our knight. So we moved our king out of the way. The reason why we moved it out of the way was, and we did think that it was an, a brilliant position for them, but I did think that they were going to be coming here, you know, with the bishop. So then kind of maybe forcing our hand to actually push the pawn up and then they win, win the rook. But if you have a look at the tail of the tape on here, it's basically showing, let's go back again, from them doing this particular move that's okay but they're actually okay here and it says bishop e3 rather than actually attacking so i didn't need to worry too much about that this is why i did do my king move thinking that that, that was a problem but it doesn't say that that's really an issue still showing them as plus so this is basically saying knight e8, so basically bringing the knight back around again, protecting this area. So this is why it's not losing too much sleep over that particular manoeuvre. So that's something to put in the mental roller decks. In the shorter games though, uh, I just think more king safety as best possible. So we castled, and they did bring the knight down. The computer's saying it doesn't really know what this knight move is either. Uh, but we didn't take advantage of whatever it was that we're supposed to take. Knight takes e4, which is obviously the pawn in the center here. In my head, I'm thinking, is it poisonous? Um, I don't have much time, it's a short game. I, I, all I'm thinking about is getting my king out of this position, which I thought would have been a problem. So again, this is like that focused strategy, you know, um, focusing on one particular strategy realizing i think i've made a mistake type thing so i'm moving the king out of the way so that then there is no problems there rather than going for the pawn in my head i'm thinking that's poisonous because i'm going to get hit and i'm going to lose my rook but looking at the bigger picture there was nothing really to worry about on that score not that i would have changed anything because it is a shorter game nine times out of ten you, you're going to plump for more safety maneuvers I'm a bit more risk averse when it is the shorter games. I'm trying to my best to just try and keep my king safe and find those key squares, working the team together. So they push down with the pawn. So again, it's kind of like giving up a free piece. So I'm starting to rest a little bit easy. My pieces are coming over, giving my king a bit of company. So I'm feeling a little bit more chilled and relaxed. They have a single knight over on the other side of the board, but not resting on my laurels because nothing's clear as yet could be looking to get this but the queen is protecting this pawn at the moment bishop comes down and it gives itself up basically at this point i'm thinking okay i think this must be a give up game still focused on potential for this but we've got the knights protecting so if the knight does take does the queen still win anything towards our king Sometimes you can have players that just give up pieces left, right and centre and then somehow they miraculously find brilliant squishes on your king. So we captured the bishop and then they brought their bishop out. Again, didn't really know what that was doing. It wasn't really attacking anything meaty. Did it improve their position? 
do have a free pawn here, but is it overextending? So a smaller piece attacking a higher piece, rather than jumping with the knight attacking the pawn and repositioning, keeping it small and tidy, making space for our queen as well to actually come through and attack the king, small potato, things like that. So the knight does move, and we're now looking to go for an x-ray through to the king, keeping everything simple and straightforward, not being too fancy or arty with anything. Queen comes in front of the king, I'm thinking at this point, hmm, what's that? But then obviously I can see he's attacking the knight, but if our rook gets a check on the queen, then obviously it's an x-ray through to the king, so they're going to lose the queen, unless of course he brings his bishop and blocks. So we go for the discovered check with the rook on the queen and for some strange reason they don't see this and I did have a quick check to see if his knight had a check on our king and they didn't so we could take the queen off the board. And at this point now I think it was a matter of just jostling, putting pressure on the king, attacking pieces that are unprotected so the bishop and the knight are unprotected so we can take either one of them off and just readjust and at this point the opponent's just giving pieces up and that's all she wrote really so interesting game there but the early part of it was really around again this tunnel visioning the focus strategy i don't think any human can get away from it you'll focus on something you know and it will be to the detriment of other things and but it's just making so that you understand what you're doing and so that you understand what benefits you're creating from what you're doing. You may miss the golden shots, but those golden shots might be out of character for yourself. So like overextending your pieces just to grab a pawn or um, just to go and grab another minor piece, but your piece is not protecting your king, but it's grabbed a piece, so your upper piece, but your position is not that good. To me, that wouldn't sit well with me because I'm a positional player. If you're one of those that just whips stuff off the board and don't really care what the position looks like and you're championing the fact that you're up material or and, and that's it, then that's your bag and that's the way that you operate and you'll feel comfortable with that. So that'll be your advantage. So you'll be happy doing that. So you have to do what you're happy doing and how you're going to feel during the game. But... 100% of the time you will miss something you can't do everything you can't grab everything even the best players in the world once they make their move they've made the move they are then committed to that process for that brief moment from that move that they've made they've had to commit to whatever they've decided to do and when it comes to the evaluation afterwards if it's not the perfect game then, then obviously it's going to have loopholes in it even the perfect games for other players that you watch they might not be perfect for you so when we analyze the old historical games yes they they might be fantastic and they might be brilliant technically but in your heart of hearts you must agree you probably would not have played that way they may have done maneuvers that you've gone eh i'm not too sure about that but then it might turn turn around that it ends up in a position that you are comfortable with but they've just gone around it in a different way so you have to find your own way of dealing with the processes on the board the strategies the planning and your own internal focused tunnel vision